All right, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us for another CentOS Dojo. Um, we have with us several members of the board of directors who will answer all of your questions. If you would like to ask questions, you can do so either in the chat or in the Q&A. That's in the, the section to the right of your screen. And uh, we will get started with some introductions here. Um, and uh, this, this uh, session is recorded. And so everything you say can and will be used against you <laughs> later on. So let's, let's start with some introductions. Um, oh, and oh, Pat, Pat has Pat joined us. Excellent. excellent. And Johnny. Johnny. So let's start, so let's with, some start introductions with some introductions here. here. We, have, we an have an echo, echo going, going on. on. So if so somebody, somebody uh, uh, can mute their speakers or their mic or something. Yeah. So let's uh, move around the screen here. Bex. Hi, I'm Brian Exelbeard, Bex. I am the Red Hat liaison to the CentOS board. And so as such, I actually speak on behalf of Red Hat when I speak for the board or speak at the board meetings. And so I'm the only member of the board who does not represent themselves. I work for the REL business unit and you'll learn more about me in the next talk. Thomas. Hey, I'm Thomas Olive. I'm working at CERN. I joined um, the board uh, last year and uh, I'm interested in everything around distribution. So go ahead, ask questions. Davide. Hi, I'm Davide. I'm a production engineer at Facebook. I, within Santos, I chair the Hyperscale SIG. Uh, I joined the board this year and happy to answer any questions you might have. Josh. Hey, Josh Boyer, uh, newly appointed board, mer board member with Davide. Uh, I work on RHEL in the Linux engineering organization. Johnny. Everybody Hi, knows my, you though, right? Yeah, I, I hope so, right? So my name is Johnny Hughes, and I've been building and signing CentOS packages since about 2003. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. And I work. Oh, I work in, internally inside of Red Hat, and I am on the uh, CPE team, um, the team that actually takes care. Part of our job is to take care of the infrastructure for CentOS as well as uh, the uh, infrastructure and, and, and the startup of uh, CentOS Stream eight and nine. And Pat. Hi, I'm Pat. I joined the board about the same time as Tomas. I've been working in the rebuild space for uh, over a decade, both uh, in, informally with the CentOS community and uh, directly on Scientific Linux. Uh, worked with Fedora on a couple things here and there. I am always happy to chat with you about free software projects. So as you've heard, we have a, a wide range of expertise here. Please do ask your questions. And uh, we, we didn't really preload this with a bunch of staged questions, but uh, if, uh, if there are no questions, I'll ask the, the directors to, to ramble at length. So please, please do ask any questions you might have either in the chat or in the Q&A tool. All right, I will, I will start then with a question that I was asked on IRC this morning. It's already been answered on the mailing list, but uh, when will CentOS Stream 9 be available? Do, do you want me to cover that one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess it depends on the definition of available. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going to go with it. Um, so we have CentOS Stream 9. Uh, production composes in place. Uh, you can find them. They are going to be going to the mirrors very soon, I believe. Uh, I think we actually have it on the CentOS mirror network, but we don't have um, like a CentOS repos definition in place. I know the team was working on that either last week or this week, but uh, any day now in terms of normal availability that most people would think of. Yeah, on the Stream 9 front, uh, do we have uh, uh, release notes or some documentation for things that we're excited about? 
up that we can point people towards? No, not that okay. I know. That's a good question, though. Um, I'm not aware of us producing release notes for stream. Uh, I would say at the point when RHEL 9 beta is released, we can certainly leverage those, but stream will have already you know, moved on towards what we're doing to GA. Shouldn't be that much different, though, considering it's a major release. There was some talk of making the documentation public in a Git repo somewhere so that folks could contribute to it before it was out for L. I don't know what's the stage of that. Uh, I saw there was a try down CentOS docs on this as well. Yeah. I actually don't know the answer to that question either. Uh, Carl is is uh, pointing out that we do have a CentOS stream release package that has CentOS stream repos in it. And Brian says we're still working with the docs team. I'll give a personal answer to that is uh, I, I've been enjoying Toolbox on Fedora to be able to manage my containers and it will be available on EL9. So this will be very exciting to, to be able to run containers um, easily with graphic application and things. So if you didn't check out this project yet, I encourage you to, to have a look to, to, to Toolbox. It's a very, very nice project and it helps a lot uh, if you're a desktop user and want to containerize uh, applications. We have two questions in the chat, and I'm going to uh, read this aloud for the purpose of the recording. The first one is, what's going to replace SIG core T functional for CS9? In particular, I'm interested in compose mirror content gating. Will we be able to see test status somewhere and contribute tests to it? I'm also interested in these if anybody knows the answer. We should have invited Brian to join this panel. <laughs> um, his answer for the recording is he, he suggests focus on package level testing uh, through GitLab right now. So I don't, I don't know that we have an answer to the what is going to replace it, um, but that is a suggested approach. Is the functional actually going away? I thought the plan was to keep it around and have something else, but I'm not sure, to be honest. It's, it's worth mentioning in this context that um, the CentOS project is governed in what's known as a bicameral fashion in the sense that the board of directors is primarily responsible for the, the health of the project and the, the functioning of the various parts and that SIGs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Whereas technical leadership happens throughout the project um, and there, there are people who are not on the board who are making technical decisions. And uh, those two things are, there's obviously a lot of overlap, but those two things are separate in many senses. Yeah, anyway, um, on, go ahead. On the uh, uh, testing front, I believe uh, there's a presentation at the May Dojo on CentOS Stream CI state and future plans. Um, I, I would try to give the presenter's name, but I'm certain to butcher it. But there was a good video on that at the last uh, Dojo talking about what the CI getting policies are headed towards. And I could talk a little bit about T-functional. So basically that, that was something that we've been using for quite a long time. Uh, it's going to continue to be alive as long as we have, certainly as long as we have CentOS 7 uh, released, because that's, that's what we used to do the release on CentOS 7. Um, as far as the stream 9 is concerned, that's where we're starting to roll in all of the tests that, that the rel developers want to roll in in order to uh, you, you know in order to do the testing and so that CI is going to be significantly bigger and better have more tests and gating and all kinds of other things in it that we don't have in T functional which is basically just something that the community put together uh, and we update that the T functional stuff when we update it it's because people have, had a problem that they talked to us about and, and helped us solve whatever problem that was. And then we rolled that into our testing to make sure we don't do it again. So, so that's basically from the, from the older versions of CentOS and fixing problems that we saw uh, that we actually released. Uh, and most of those problems were things that, that we did in CentOS that weren't actually in RHEL. They were problems that we created somehow. And then the T-functional tests actually go through and look at that stuff and make sure that you know, make sure that the secure boot signature is correct and, and a bunch of other different things that, that we uh, 
didn't get right on our changing. And, and most of those, a lot of those tests aren't really, um, a lot of those tests aren't really relevant to stream because stream is happening upstream of rel. And it, and we're not having a problem doing the builds the same way we did when it was downstream. Uh, it's actually getting built uh, beforehand and actually getting built by the, the rel team. Uh, they, they actually push the builds and do the, 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 the work on all of the packages. So it's a, it's a different concept. We have a question from Luna who says, I saw RHEL 8.5 beta was released a couple of days ago. Will CentOS Stream 8 update to the stable version of that RHEL version, or is it nine only? Is it nine that only will be supported in the future? Can I can I take this one real quickly as a user point of view rather than, than someone working at Red Hat? So we had an interesting thing is we had to debug a problem with some Intel CPUs. And basically CentOS Stream is the upstream of uh, Red 8.5. So the kernel that you have in stream now is a kernel that would be shipped with 8.5. So we could test basically uh, our Intel CPU with stream and it was working while it was not working with 8.4. And so we are sure that it will be working in 8.5. So so you have to remember that stream is already, if you want so, rel 8.5 at this stage. Uh, is it clear? And maybe some people uh, want to add on that. Yeah, uh, I'd add to that uh, stream uh, 8 is running to 2024. Uh, the, the support for stream 8 isn't going anywhere. Uh, stream 9 is where the exciting things are kind of happening for a lot of us here on the board because this is a new and exciting and lively project. But Stream 8 is going to hang around until 2024. Um, it's it's not going anywhere. So don't don't worry about that disappearing on you. That is something that we feel very, very important. Stream 8 is going to be here 2024. And as far as CentOS Linux 8 is concerned, the downstream build, uh, we are going to build CentOS Linux 8.5 uh, off, based off of RHEL 8.5, that's going to get built, it's going to get released, and then depending on whether that happens before or after the end of this year, uh, it'll either be available for a long period of time, uh, you know, if, if I don't know when 8.5, RHEL 8.5 is going to come out, but uh, at December 31st, um, that's the EOL for CentOS Linux 8, not CentOS Stream 8, which is, as Pat said, is going to be around for until 2024, uh, CentOS Linux 8 will still get moved into the vault area. So vault.centos.org will have the final release version of CentOS Linux 8.5 and all of the zero day updates that come out as part of, cent of, of uh, the source code for, for RHEL 8.5. All of those updates that are zero day updates and all of the GA release for 8.5 will go out they will it will be on vaultlessintos.org and then it won't get any more updates after that. So basically, 8.5 on GA day uh, and any updates that actually physically happen before December 31st of this year will get rolled into what we have is 8.5 or CentOS 8 Linux, and nothing after that besides the zero day updates if the for some reason, the RHEL 8.5 gets delayed. Um, so that, that's what will be in the vault. Now, we don't recommend that you actually use that in production after updates stop happening because there's going to be security issues in that, you know, in that 8.5 area once Red Hat is producing uh, Red Hat Linux 8 updates for security that we're no longer rolling into a downstream CentOS Linux 8. So we don't recommend that you use that. In fact, you should, you probably shouldn't be using it right now. It's only two months until it goes away. If you haven't already made plans to move off of CentOS 8 Linux, uh, you're way behind. So you need to be doing something to, to plan on the fact that it's not going to be here uh, after December. Got a few more questions. Um, 
first we have an anonymous question. What is the state of modularity in CentOS Stream 9? I, I can take that one. Um, modularity will continue to exist in Stream 9 and RHEL 9. Uh, the usage of it is a little bit reduced in scope based on what you saw in RHEL 8, perhaps. I think in Stream 9 Composes today, we have a one or two modules, both related to our container tooling. Uh, I actually expect that to go away before RHEL 9 GA because we're doing some repackaging of how we're doing those tools. Uh, but then we'll have modules introduced in, in later versions of uh, a RHEL, and they'll materialize in stream before they show up there. So no default modules in 9 expected. Correct. For nice. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start. That's right. Uh, Brian points out, and, and this is actually really uh, something that's good to highlight. Uh, we were able to actually do this modular development in stream and, and get it in there and prove that it, it's actually working, including a, a slight change in the module format. Uh, to help validate that like what we would like to do with modules long term will actually work. Uh, so stream is, continues to pay dividends on what we're trying to accomplish there. Yeah, stream has a lot of potential, but it is also a scary Hydra, but it also can like you can feed it a lot. It has multiple heads. Mike asks, what are some areas of the CentOS project that you think could use the most help or work? Well, as we move forward, I think that the SIGs are going to be the most important community part of CentOS Stream, right? Because the CentOS Stream is, is the internal development for RHEL. So obviously, community input to that's going to be important to fix things and to fix problems and, and for feedback, but also uh, special interest group content is going to be additive to that, right? So if there's something that you want to get added to uh, allow the community to use it, then uh, the, the SIG is the perfect way to make that happen. Um, and then there'll be a different, there's a whole, obviously there's a whole different process for getting things into RHEL. We're not talking about putting things into RHEL, but we are talking about getting things on CentOS mirrors and available to the public through uh, CentOS stream in a, in a SIG process. And if that stuff is good, and if, and if you guys want to work and get that stuff into RHEL, Red Hat will have a way to make that kind of thing, those kind of things happen, right? They have, they have partners and, and things to make, make that sort of stuff happen. But uh, just getting it out in the community, uh, open sourcing your code, getting your code worked on, uh, SIGs are the definitely where I see uh, the, the biggest impact in moving forward with CentOS. I would personally love to see more people start engaging directly with CentOS on GitLab. I think for Stream, we have a really good system and a really good opportunity there where people can directly engage with the maintainers and send PRs if they have specific things they would like to see changing in packages. Uh, and I don't think folks quite realize right now that that is actually a thing. Like I was mentioning before in the hallway track that we had a really good experience recently getting a number of fixes merged in nine through that pipeline. And I would love to see more people take advantage of that. Also, because I think the more people use this, the more the maintainers become familiar with the process and the easier it gets. Yeah, I will definitely uh, echo that. I would love to see some folks engage with Stream as sort of like particularly Stream 9 for their workflows. What do you need this OS to do? Install it. Does it do that by default? If not, should it do that by default? If it shouldn't do that by default, is there some tooling we can build to make it easier to make that change over? I'd love to see people really look at what they're running the system workloads are figure out how we can make stream adapt to those with as little effort as possible so that it can actually do what you need it to do in a clear and straightforward manner. As those changes are going to stick around, they're going to move into RHEL, as uh, Davida was mentioning, so we can get a clear, defined, make the system do what you want it to do the way you want it to do it process, 
that then lands in the fully supported product. So if you can't run stream, you can actually get the same advantages there. And so I'm really seeing a lot of interesting workflow options available where you can influence how the OS behaves, but we have to get on record as to how we want it to behave. I have a, a slightly different answer. Um, CentOS has long been a more user-focused user community than, than developer-focused. Um, and as such, a great place to get involved is with the documentation. The, the wiki has been accreting garbage for 15 years and needs some folks to step, step up to clean that up, make it accurate and up-to-date. Uh, clean out the stuff that is no longer relevant. There's a lot of that. I've been working on it over the past couple of years, but uh, I'm not the expert that most of you are. And that's that's a place where we could really use a lot of help. Um, and then additional to that, we have the CentOS forums and all of the sort of uh, universe of, of social media sites like the Facebook site the mailing lists where, where people come to ask questions and those questions often go unanswered. These are places where your expertise can be really valuable to the community and make CentOS more useful for everybody with, with your expertise. And on the subject of documentation, uh, let me also plug the server that Fabian put together for SIGS, where SIGS can now put up static sites with their own documentation on SIGS.CentOS.org. Uh, and we started using that for hyperscale, and it's really, really nice because uh, we were looking for a place to start doing more like user-facing documentation because I think the wiki is a bit of a discoverability problem, partly because, as you mentioned, a lot of the content isn't the greatest and partly because the format, I think some users might find it a bit odd for documentation and having like a curated static site is really helpful there. Yeah, and one more point is uh, as well, if you don't speak only English, uh, we always welcome contribution in different languages. The next question is from Robbie, who asks, some major hardware vendors have been less than enthusiastic regarding the support of CentOS Stream. Does the CentOS project or the board have any insight on this? Is there anything the community can do to help? Well, I would say engaging with the vendors that you have a relationship with and both helping them understand what Stream is and trying to help them get on board is definitely useful here. Uh, in my experience, there is still a lot of confusion sometimes around Stream. I definitely had to have the talk of like, no, CentOS is not gone. This is still a thing. And like, no, Stream isn't changing every day with more than one vendor. Um, so definitely that will help. Uh, and I suspect going forward, as these messages start sinking and there's more and more vendors that start building against stream, this will become easier. Yeah, really the only thing that I see in stream that is any kind of problem for, for anybody is, is, is kernels as, as we don't have the same kind of ABI stuff that they have in release type kernels, but the release type kernels are getting rolled into eight right now right so they're optional installs but they're not the default install because they have a lower version right but those things are available so you could uh, because we need to test those as well right so so you could um have some of the other kernels if you wanted them also uh if the issue happens to be modules or something like that there's a sig for for kernel modules and the vendor could also uh, start something that 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 uh, they use a kernel that they build themselves if if that's their sticking point. So so and that's the only thing that I see that's in any way a problem in stream is 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 the fact that some of the kernel ABIs move ahead uh, during the during the period, right? And that's easily addressable if somebody wants to address it, if somebody in the community wants to address it. Other than that, it's perfect. I mean, I've been using nothing but stream for my main workstation since we started the project, and I've had zero problems with it uh, for, I don't know, a year. I mean, yeah. And on the uh, user land front, I've been running all sorts of various tests and their progressions against 
things in user space. And I've found, I don't know, maybe a dozen additional APIs that are in stream that are not in RHEL. Uh, when you compare that to the roughly 1 million linkable objects, uh, 12, 12 is not that many. And generally speaking, there are new exciting features that you have to specifically opt into. Uh, for the user land stuff, I really haven't found anything that doesn't run on stream or that runs on stream that doesn't run on a rel. Uh, they're just, they're probably, like they logically can exist, but I haven't found them. So Yeah, basically if somebody converted your machine, if somebody converted your Linux machines over to stream, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference unless you did a bunch of research to figure it out. I think I think that's the the moral of Pat's story right there. I don't actually think you'd be that hard pressed, but <laughs> uh, I mean the Nvidia module uh, pops to mind. Like that's going to be a, a challenge that we know. Um, that aside, I guess when I read the question from Robbie, it was a great question. But as the rel guy that does this day in and day out. Uh, I read maybe more into it than it was intended because talking about a major hardware vendor supporting stream, like what does support mean is, is one question. But the, the initial takeaway I had was if the major hardware vendor is intending for their hardware to be supported in RHEL, then it will naturally have to go through stream to begin with. Um, so engaging our OEM partners, our ISV partners, that's all activity that we're doing on the RHEL side. Uh, through internal mechanisms. So hopefully, like Pat and Johnny have said, things are working, but the support thing is, uh, that raised some some eyebrows for me. Like, what does that mean? You know, what does it look like? And Robbie, we can talk through chat or whatever and, and cover that if we need to. Yeah, for what is worth, one thing I've seen a few times is uh, a lot of time people, when they say support them in qualification, so they, they will want to use a product from a vendor and the vendor says, this works on, X and if it breaks on X, you can send us a ticket and we'll fix it. Uh, one challenge I've seen there for stream is because stream doesn't have versions, it's hard for the vendor to say this is qualified on stream because stream is a moving target to some extent. Uh, on with, with my Facebook hat on, one thing we have tried and has worked uh, is telling people, okay, given that we have composes, qualify these compose and let's use that as the thing you have qualified. And we, we had better luck with that approach. And I think co effectively composes are the versions for stream. Um, of course, this might not necessarily work for all cases, but that is an option here. And at CERN, putting my CERN hat, we have the same uh, approach, basically. And uh, you, Alex is around, I think, in the chat, if you want to discuss about uh, what was done around stream uh, in terms of how we distribute it. So let me know how we'll connect people together. <laughs> The next question that we have, if, if there's no more comments from the board, um, speak up now if you have any. Uh, the well, next question, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I was just gonna say, obviously the versions of packages in stream is different. I'm not saying that it's exactly the same. I'm saying from a function, I was just saying from a functionality standpoint, if you weren't actually looking at versions or looking for qualifications, which vendors need to, in order to, to certify things, um, I was just saying from the from the standpoint of you running things and doing things on your machine that it functionally works just works right but it's not going to be obviously not going to be the same versioning The next question that we have is rel and centos stream 8 has a ton of modules default to unsupported content right now, PHP, et cetera. Can we see default streams change to supported content in the future so people get the right stuff? We have no plans to do that, no. It is, I don't want to trivialize the, the question because it is actually a problem that we continue to iterate on and try to figure out how best to address on the RHEL side of things. Um, but at the moment, we have no plans to change the defaults. So I just wanted to be clear. Is the point that is does it mean like the version of PHP that we ship is unsupported upstream and upstream must move on? Is that what this is about? 
Uh, no, I, I understood the question to mean uh, in some cases, we ship a module with a default stream. So if you type yum install, whatever that thing is, uh, it will install that version. And because of the way we have modules um, or application streams more in general, because it modules a packaging type, it's not the concept that we're really talking about. Those have a shorter life cycle than the full rel release, and some of them are already out of support. Oh, okay, but you can still use alternate streams to get other versions that okay. are still under support. Okay. That's right. That's particularly complicated in database land where you have actual binary blobs on the disk that are your table layouts. And you don't want to get, like, surprise, you've got a new version of Postgres. Well, that's fantastic. It's faster, it's better supported, it'll do more things, except the more things that it does are not read your database tables. And uh, that's, yeah, that's. It's complicated to get people the new, bright, shiny, secured stuff and also not completely trash their production boxes. That's right. And I will say this. Um, Davide asked earlier about default modules in, in RHEL 9. Uh, this is one of the lessons that we've, we've learned um, and is something we're trying to take into account for future versions. So. We have another question in the Q&A. Um, if you have asked questions in the chat, they have scrolled away and I've lost track of them. So if you have questions that have not been answered yet, please put them in the Q&A tab or they will get neglected. The next question is, do you think there will be a point where migrating from a CentOS Linux 8 system to a CentOS Stream 8 system will start breaking? That shouldn't happen. Like it should just work. I mean, it's hard to speak in absolutes, but I can't really think of within eight. I can't really think of scenarios where this would be a problem. Now, if you try to do an update in place from, say, CentOS Linux to Stream Nine, two years from now, well, that's not supported. But also, yeah, I, I would suspect that will not be as easy. But for eight, I would wager it will probably be okay. I, yeah, again, it's hard to it's hard to say for sh you know without looking at at specific examples of of packages that things get moved to right. You you can't say for sure that that's going to be the case, but it should be the case because it should be fine because Red Hat's not going to publish something that totally breaks. Uh, moving from from rel 8.4 to rel 9 or to rel 8.6 they're they're not going to put anything in there that breaks that right they have people moving all the time from one version to another and they have z streams that they support for periods of time uh and then people have to move off of that during the the life cycle so i doubt very of rel so i doubt very seriously that 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 during the rel 8 process there's going to be something that that breaks uh, an upgrade from rel 8.0 to rel 8.9 for example i don't think that's going to break so the same thing should be true for stream from from that standpoint yeah i mean i, I think i agree with all of you i i'm perhaps a little bit more conservative and i would say if you're planning to do that you know 8.5 goes out uh, you're on CentOS Linux 8.5, and then a year goes by and you want to update to stream, please try. Do it on a VM perhaps first, right? Get some data. Because if if that migration fails, we want to know about it so we can fix it, right? Um, but don't do it blindly. <laughs> yeah, that goes for every migration, by the way. Yeah, for, for anything, right? I mean... The moral of the story is make sure you always have good backups because you never know when your system is going to throw a hard drive. So a good backup is always a wonderful thing to have. Backup? What's that? Mike asks, do you think users would be able to perform DNF system upgrade for stream nine to stream 10. He's not expecting this for eight to nine. So I wrote this in the chat. If someone's interested in building this and helping make this a thing, we would definitely be happy to see that. 
this is one of those things that is technically possible because Fedora does it. Um, but someone needs to actually test it out, file bugs for what doesn't work, fix the bugs, and then do the upkeep to keep this working in the long term, which is, I suspect, a non-trivial amount of work. But if someone wants to do this or spin up a SIG around this, that would definitely be appreciated. Yes, and we, we had the same question for seven to eight, and we asked the same. We said we need people to try to do it, and we need help, and unfortunately it didn't happen. So if you're really interested, it's a good time to to, to try to start to do something uh, about it. But uh, we need people to show up and to, to look at what can be done. And it's certainly non-trivial, right? For, for It's hard enough to do for Fedora, and that's like a six-month window, right? of updated package versions. And when you do it for 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 CentOS or RHEL, you're talking about a five year minimum uh time frame, right? A three year to five year time frame. So that's like uh updating a Fedora release to like a release that's that's uh six or seven versions higher than the one you're on right now, which is significantly different than than doing a one to the next release. Packages don't work. Data doesn't work. Uh, the configurations don't continue to work across that ver that big of a version of uh, change in packages. There's a like, I would love to see a migration path that would take you from stream eight to stream nine. But as I mentioned earlier, the the, the key there is for things that are written out to disk. What do you do with databases? How do you read the old data files that are written in the format that it recognizes. How, how do you uh, migrate your configurations for things like, like RabbitMQ, where it's written in Erlang now, and then they moved it to an II syntax, and so we're going to bring down your entire message bus, because you got a new package, and that's great. And so getting those kinds of configuration changes where the actual syntax of the file has changed on you can be very difficult. Uh, I look sort of historically, so if you look at the move from 6 to 7, Okay, well, we had the user move, or the stuff in bin move to user. If your partitions aren't big enough, your upgrade will, will fail there because you put all the stuff in the bin that's now in user, and your box is trash. Or if you look at the move from 7 to 8, well, which module stream do we pick to move you into for Apache? And so as we sort of look somewhat into the crystal ball for 8 to 9, well, which module streams do you pick when you're going from uh, as we mentioned in the chat there, you're going from an unsupported PHP module stream that has reached out life. Well, do we leave that on your box so that your web server still works? Because I feel like the expected result is, well, no, give me the security patch. But the expected result is also, well, my app should still work. And uh, those are really opposed options. But your, uh, your, all, your audio is a bit bad. Five, seven. Your, your, your audio? Your... Your audio is not great. Uh, I don't know if you can do something. You were a bit too far from the mic. I don't know. Okay. I can uh, try and move to a different microphone. I was getting the echo earlier, and I switched to this headphone mic that's kind of garbagey. Yeah, you're coming through really choppy. It sounds like it's network rather than microphone. Maybe a browser reload helps sometimes. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's the ideas of migration are tricky. But I'd love to see some work on that front. And basically, a special interest group. This is another example of where a special interest group would be great for for this kind of thing. Um, if somebody wanted to do that and wanted to to have a special interest group that allowed uh, migration of one version of the stream to the next, we would certainly consider that. Uh, uh, you know, on the board and and, and see about getting it approved and get people working on it but that's something that that uh is difficult and we certainly don't have time to to do that as part of the normal uh main maintenance of CentOS stream in general right and i don't know about you guys i used to do this for a living as an administrator and i would never actually upgrade any machine in place that had anything in production on it right it would always be on a new machine and i'd make sure all my data was working in the new place place before I did a conversion. Um, so I, I don't know that there's really a, a good case for doing major upgrades in place on 
machines that are that are server based, maybe workstations or, or machines that you use to run containers, but not normal uh, applications because of the uh, the difficulty of, of moving data and configurations between different versions. Yeah, I think for workstations, this will be particularly valuable. I agree. For servers, we have the same approach. We nuke and pave because it's a lot. It's a lot easier. Uh, but I think for people that want to run stream as their workstation because it provides them an environment that's more stable than Fedora, for example, uh, definitely the ability to have in-place updates would be really invaluable because people don't want to remit a laptop every three years or so. We have a question from Bala regarding container tools. How long between a dev release to a CentOS stream release? For example, Podman 3.4.0 was released this week. When will it be, when will it be available in CentOS stream? I don't I actually know if that's a question we can answer. Josh can answer that as far as one of the real guys going to actually start looking at it, right? That's not something that, that the CentOS stream yeah. team has anything to do with. Yeah, and, and I think having a, an answer, you know, at a higher level might be helpful. I mean, this particular package, no, I don't think we can answer that. But but understanding how the rel development process works. Yeah, I, I can speak to that. That one's actually pretty easy. So um, when a particular version of a package or update will land in stream is entirely dependent on the rel development process so container tools has their own roadmap that they do for rel customers um, i actually don't know if it's public or not i can try to find that out but essentially the plans there are they kind of rev it much faster than the rest of rel uh, and they have multiple streams at least in stream nine stream eight they're kind of revisiting how they're how they're doing this um so an upstream release into when it gets into RHEL, sometimes it will be never. Uh, sometimes it will be in the next Y stream, and then we would see it land in CentOS stream first. Um, and sometimes we skip upstream releases, right? Uh, depending on what the product roadmap looks like. Marcin asks, will SIGs continue to produce packages for CentOS stream eight after the CentOS stream nine release? Overlap of content production for main repos is obvious, but for SIGs, not so much. I can take this one. So it obviously depends on the SIG. Uh, I can say that for hyperscale, uh, we are currently building for 8S, and we started building for 9S, and we'll continue doing 9 when, when we can actually release packages. Uh, I would expect we will keep everything up for 8 until the EOL for 8, for stream 8, I mean. Um, my hunch is that you will probably continue seeing a decent flow of packages in for eight for the next couple of years. Uh, after that, I would expect it will probably taper out because most of the developers and most of the work will have moved on to nine. But if someone wants to continue doing builds for eight, I, there's nothing stopping us for it. And if somebody in the community is particularly interested in a specific package, um, I think we could definitely try to keep that actively built for eight um, going forward. Um, but then every SIG is going to have different policies on this, I think. Another possible answer, um, it's the same answer, but stated differently. If this is something that you care about, then come make it happen. You know, Step up and, and be part of the solution. And that all of our SIGs are very welcoming to people that, that want to come and, and help out. And so if, if the SIG does not have the resources to continue a Stream 8 build and you want that to happen, then make it happen. Yeah, in doubt, always create a bugzilla and uh, worst case, you will be told no, but at least you tried. Yeah, and I think honestly for, at least from what I've seen, the, the bar for like, oh, we need this package built, we didn't say hyperscale because like, I don't know, we need this version of crap updated because it's a fix. It is not a ton of work. Uh, so like if someone asks nicely, we would probably do it. If someone wants to contribute the work, that is even better, of course. <laughs> we have time for, I don't know, one or two more questions, if there are any.
Um, I'll, I'll take this moment to remind everyone that board of directors meetings are now open to anyone that's on the CentOS Develop mailing list and wishes to join them. The, when the announcement goes out for the board of directors meeting, there will be information in there about how you can request an invite to the meeting. Uh, we don't just post the link to the meeting live online because that leads to spammers showing up and doing unsavory things, but uh, it is open to anyone who requests that. The board of directors meeting will be held on October the 13th at 2000 UTC. I just sent the email to CentOS Devil. I was late Excellent. by one day, sorry, but uh, it should be it should be in. So we are still building the agenda for the next one, but feel free to bring subjects if you want to. I think there's a few more questions. Seeing yeah, I just saw one come in, um, and this is this is a good one. What is the status of RHEL build routes for SIGs? And there is a ticket about this number four hundred. And that might actually be a question that uh, Brian Stinson might know something else about. Yeah, that seems like an infrastructure SIG uh, question. Yeah, to be honest, I don't have feedback on that. I can't reply. Yeah, yeah I saw there were several concerns on the ticket that we were fine with doing it, but I don't know where things are at. Yeah, for the recording, Brian said in chat that they're working on it, and then they have to change some of the ways that we consume uh, con content in the infrastructure space. Right. Whoever Anonymous is, they have very good questions. I like it. <laughs> True story. Those are some really great questions. I think we didn't reply to Martin's question, did we? The second one. Will SIG continue to produce package for C8S yeah. after we, we talked about Good. that. Okay, sorry. I thought it was the, another kind of question. Okay. All right. Well, we are almost out of time. So if you have a question, here's your your last chance. The answer to that Podman question is. Uh, I'm actually releasing that today. So um, it was in the it was in the set of packages that we just got uh, into stream eight, and it's already being tested in QA. But that has everything to do when the rel team actually released the the code, and nothing to do with uh, you know us deciding to put it in there or not. Well, uh, thank you for the uh, the directors who have been here to answer your questions. Um, we're going to take a short break now before the next session. In the next session, uh, Bex will be talking about what Red Hat wants, which has been an on ongoing question since the uh, CentOS group were brought on at Red Hat in 2014. And Bex will have all of the answers to that in about 10 minutes. So thank you all for your wonderful questions. Rich, I hope you brought your shadow puppets. <laughs> thanks for your questions, and thanks for the board participation here. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you all.